Welcome to another HRO Today educational podcast. I'm Elliot Clark, the CEO of HRO Today. We are the publishers of HRO Today Magazine, HRO Today EMEA, and HRO Today APAC. And we are the producers of the HRO Today forums held around the world and the managers of the HRO Today Association. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that bedevils HR and, frankly, all management science professionals, all executives, and it's the difference between data and insights. In fact, there is more data collected in the last two years than in the previous 100 1,000. Data is accumulating at an astronomical rate and computer stores are filled with it. But do we really know what makes our business tick? And today we're going to talk about data versus insight specifically as it relates to talent acquisition. Future of your business is your talent pipeline. How do you know what's coming in the door and how do you analyze it? And we are thrilled to have as our guest, Paul Hardy, who is the Chief Solutions Officer for 7-Step RPO. 7-Step, as many of you know, is one of the most highly rated recruitment process outsourcing firms in the world. They're a division of motion recruitment. They've ranked at the top of our Baker's Dozen list of RPO service providers for customer satisfaction for many years, one of the leading providers in the space. Paul has actually been with Motion Recruitment since 1993, when he joined as a VP of sales. He moved in 2007 over to the Seven Step RPO group, where he was responsible for both sales and operations. And in 2018, he became their chief solutions officer. And he's essentially responsible for working with their operations teams and the clients to really look at what customers need, what kinds of tech stack 7-Step should be providing to them, and how they can innovate to meet the customer needs not only of today and in the future. Paul, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you so much, Elliot, for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. And before we get started, we're recording on Veterans Day, and I just want to thank you for your service. We've shared, or you've shared some many stories about your career in the military. And again, just want to thank you for that and shout out to anybody else who's listening to this podcast that's also served on such an important day. Well, thank you. And thank you to America because it was a privilege to serve. I just hope everything turns out okay in the end. (laughs) I think that one of the things that we think about, Paul, and when we talk about data, we recognize that most HR departments deploy multiple technology platforms. And we know from our research and others that most are not well integrated. Mm -hmm. So all these systems have different reporting packages, and most of the reports aren't integrated. Mm -hmm. So how often do you find that your clients in town acquisition are drowning in all this conflicting and confusing mountains of data? And does this really prevent them from making good decisions, you know, good evidence-based decision-making? So to answer the questions directly, always they're drowning. And yes, it prevents them from making good decisions. It's really been interesting over the last 13 years on the RPO side of the business, how this conversation has matured. And I would sort of bucket it out over the years where I think we were strong as an RPO provider early in the days with what I'd say the blocking and the tackling right? And I think most companies work as it relates to just generating the data to be able to do your job on a day-to-day basis. Over the last probably four to five years, particularly as we got into the crunch with unemployment, right? We saw the numbers in the threes, right? Over the last several years. And during that time, you could really sense that the blocking and tackling, both internally with uh, senior leaders in HR and with their partners in RPO or otherwise, really wasn't enough. There needed to be garnered many more insights on what to do with this data. What was compounding all of that was all of the additional data that was being compiled with, you know, the emergence of big data and so on. So I would say, Elliot, that it almost got to the point where, or is at the point where there is just so much that now companies are trying to sift through what's really relevant and what's important. And furthermore, as you pointed out in the introduction here, it's one thing to have this data that is facts that are captured, but the insights that are gained in the information to put that into context is really where the value is. And so at 7-Step, we've worked really hard, uh, again, just by the nature of RPO. You have to be data junkies. You have to have strong analysts on your team. 
But one of the differences for us is that our analysts grew up in recruiting and sort of evolved into this analytics role. They had the talent for it, right? There, there is a certain kind of mindset that you need in order to be a strong analytics person, but they have the background in actual recruiting. And so often what we find with our clients who you know may have large budgets, right? And uh, as you mentioned, disparate systems and lots of access to talent and technologies. A lot of times what we find is that they just lack the context of what it is that talent acquisition is trying to do right? Or what talent management is trying to do to capture the right kinds of understandable reports to then really garner those insights on what to actually do with it all, right? And so I think that's really where the difference is. So in that sense, as they look at it, I mean, how much time and effort is HR putting in to getting all the data out of these reports into a single format? I mean, I hear horror stories about, you know, having feeds from five, six, seven different disparate systems and spending Mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars on consultants for integration. In spite of all that effort, it sounds like it continues to be an issue. Let's talk a little bit about sort of some of the solutions out there. I know you guys have a new product Mm -hmm. called Surveyo that's essentially pulling the data feeds in and and has a more analytical AI-driven approach. And a lot of people talk about artificial intelligence as one possible avenue out of this. So Surveyo provides a more analytical AI-driven approach on data collection and interpretation. How should clients be using products like Surveyo or other products that are out there that use the AI platforms to sort of solve this data clutter problem that now is universal? So I think where leadership needs to start is to think about what they're trying to solve, right? And I think we've all been thrown for a pretty major curveball here with COVID and everybody working remotely and and so on. And just the entire 2020 experience for all of us has been been quite challenging, right? But, But put that aside for a second and just think about where we were in 2019, which again, that actually feels like 10 years ago. We had no real talent available, right? You know, unemployment was, you could measure it in certain places as, you know, zero, right? Diversity inclusion was still a a strong topic, maybe not as loud as it is now, but certainly there was momentum in that area. But I think one of the main things that was really getting its time in the sun was talent management, you know, retention and development, you know, kinds of efforts. So what I mean to say here is that because there is so much data available, I think it's critical that the leaders, chief HR officer, maybe there's, you know, executive VPs of talent management, you know, whatever it may be, that team gets together and really identifies what are the core things that they feel like they need to change and what do they have already, right? So there may be some things that they have already that can stay outside of a dashboard, for example. And there may be some things that really need to be combined. And so the power behind our tools and tools like it is that we've developed an analytics engine that pulls in all of this disparate data, but it's built around a data model that is specific for talent and talent acquisition. And so one of the recommendations that I would make is if you're going out and you're going to shop for, you could hire and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on analysts and software engineers and, you know, whatever it is that you need to do in order to build something like this. But I think you need to start with providers who really understand human resources and talent acquisition. You know, as well as I'm sure most of the people on, you know, listening to this podcast that depending on the organization, you might have multiple leaders in all those different departments. One of the things that I find often in speaking particularly with prospects is that all of them have slightly different goals. And if those leaders don't get on the same page as to what their journey is going to be over a number of years, it's going to be very, very difficult to decide on what to prioritize as it relates to the insights that you want to garner from your data. So to address the disparate systems, thankfully, the technology, you know, uh, as it relates to cloud-based services and so on is really advanced. We've moved all of our technology and our unified data model off of hosted service to cloud-based, both for security as well as for expansion. And there are providers out there who are better than others as it relates to really interpreting that HR and talent acquisition data. So I think I would start with those providers who have a real niche in the industry. For us, obviously, we got our our start in fulfilling the positions. And over the years, as we've grown and become a strong strategic and consultative partner to our clients, we've invested heavily in analytics. It's been in our DNA since prior to 7-Step to be measuring everything that we're doing and constantly analyzing the effects of those things. So our heritage and just our devotion, I guess you could say, to the data and the analytics um, has given us a real advantage as it relates to being a good consultative partner to our clients. 
I think what a lot of the providers in this community have been trying to do on the technology and service side. What are the things that HR needs to bring to the table to make sure that that a product like Saveo, what do they need to have in the way of cooperation from IT to make sure that they're essentially building the, the right solution for the future? right? Because a lot of times they can look at a product and a feature and benefit, but you know as the chief solutions officer that the HR department has to do some things to be sort of ready to utilize that tool. Mm -hmm. What's like a quick one or two suggestions you would have based on your experience implementing these with clients of the things they need to do to be ready, to be prepared? The first thing that I would suggest is to think about what behaviors do you want to drive? and incentivize as you uncover the insights, right? So there's a lot of articles and talk about, you mentioned AI and the internet of things and you know this big data and so on, we could do the buzzword bingo, but humans are gonna make the decisions and should be able to make these decisions with a lot more knowledge and a lot faster because we can get the insights and the data a lot quicker you know, than we could 10 years ago. I find that when HR policy or TA leadership aren't really committed to working together in partnership and driving the right behaviors and correcting the right behaviors, then the insights can somewhat fall flat, at least as it relates to long-term results, right? So as -hmm. an example, I would say, pick a number, you know, three, four, five years ago, there was a lot of finger pointing between HR and TA. And I'm sure there still is certain large organizations, right? Hiring managers complaining that talent acquisition is getting the right talent. Maybe talent acquisition complaining the hiring managers being too picky that are hiring the right people. So, you know, assessments comes up as a solution. Well, let's just sort of take that out of the uh, hiring managers, you know, hands and put more of it into assessments. I don't think that's really been a great solution for a lot of companies. It's certainly a nice data point to make a hiring decision, but it's not the only way that you make a hiring decision, right? And at some point, regardless of whether you're using AI tools, if you're using chatbots to do screening or, you know, whatever it might be to serve up that candidate to the hiring manager, you've got to really have the right incentive to the hiring manager to be making the best decision, not only for his department and for his personal goals to reach project deadlines or whatever have you, whatever they're incentivized to do, but they also have to have the incentive for the long-term success of the company. Right. I mean, how many articles could you probably quote off the top of your head around the value of hiring diverse candidates and the long term benefits to stockholders and so on? Do you think a hiring manager who's down three people and is struggling to retain the remaining staff because they're all working overtime and weekends to get the project done is thinking about the long term benefits of the stockholder at the point that he's presented up candidate that's reasonably qualified for the job? I don't think that's what they're thinking. And so I think what happens is there's a constant struggle between speed and the need for progress, the need for meeting deadlines, and the value proposition around the development and the cultivation and the attraction of candidates or employees who will help us over time. You know, for example, I think a good program or example of that would be the commitment to hiring junior level people and developing them throughout the organization. It's been going on for years. I mean, you know, for the public accounting firms, it's the way they do business, right? It's really more of a right. calling right up the top. And then, you know, whoever survives, you know, becomes a partner 15, 20 years down the road, right? But how you really think about talent and how you really think about the long-term benefits of making the right decisions today and how it's going to benefit and then incentivize those behaviors from the hiring managers. I believe that's a lot of hiring manager training. I believe that's um, how hiring managers are reviewed over their annual reviews for retention and development. You know, I grew up in a world where training and developing talent was the number one primary way to grow. I started in sales. So it was great to close deals, but it was much better for my career to be able to teach people how to close deals, right? And so I think if you just kind of apply that scenario or that example to those managers who are under so much pressure today to perform, to drive kinds of policies that allow them to make better hiring decisions and give them more time to actually develop the talent that you can actually capture. I hope the listeners of this podcast take to heart. Paul, you know, thank you for a very thoughtful discussion because this is one of the top complaints of HR folks. This is appears in our top concerns reports. Data, data integrity, the ability to act on data, the ability to understand it and create insight is important. And most companies really need the help of organizations, whether it's firms like Seven Step RPO and its Surveo product or internal resources to really think through what do you need to do to meet that future state and be able to use the tools that are now emerging and available. 
I want to thank Paul Hardy, the Chief Solutions Officer of 7-Step RPO, for taking part in the podcast. I'm Elliot Clark, the CEO of HRO Today, and we look forward to having you join us on our next educational podcast.